Not gonna lie, I hella hate the little gift tags you just buy from Target that are super generic looking. Today I'm gonna show a few different ways to take these recollections, like blank gift tags, you can get them at other places too, these are just the ones I have, and turn them into creative gift tags for like gifts, baskets. Like this doesn't have to be holiday related, but since we're in the holidays, I'm gonna show holiday stuff. I'm gonna show you a few different ways. Some of them are a little bit more time consuming. Some of them are super fast. Most of them you might have the items already. And if not, it's just a couple to pick up. First one I'm gonna show is the fastest one. What it's gonna be is a just sprayed tag that you can then letter on. I have some newsprint to protect my surface. I love newsprint, it's cheap. And if you, as time goes on, you have like paints and whatever on it, you can use that for collages because it looks pretty rad. So I'm gonna use these tags, I'm gonna use a couple of green Dilutions ink spray. I've got fresh lime and cut grass. They sell these at Michael's. You don't have to use this brand. There's ink sprays for days. I just like the Dilutions. And I'm using these two colors because they're two different shades of the same color. If you want to mix colors, just be careful that you're not mixing the colors that are complementary colors on the wheel. Like don't do green and red, for example, or don't do blue and orange because when they mix together they're going to turn into mud so you want to pick colors in the same family if you're going to mix colors it's like a green and a blue but i'm doing two greens today and then i also am using just a little sprayer for water this is super cheap i think i got it for a couple bucks i like using it though because it's a perfect little tiny size the reason i love this one is because you can do a bunch at once so i'm going to line up three here but you could fill the whole page up if you wanted to grab your little water sprayer Just give them a quick mist. This makes the ink sprays flow a little bit more. And I usually start with the lighter color. And I'm not really spraying with any rhyme or reason. I'm just sort of spraying. And then we have this uh, darker green. Now you can just leave them like that. Let them dry like that. Sorry, my voice is going. Or you can, so I'll let, like, we can let one dry like that. We can take one maybe even add a little bit more water to it and then like lift it so that you see how the can you see how the inks are running and it's changing kind of what it would look like you just kind of tilt it kind of let them run a little bit until you have something a little different and then for one you, you could also just grab like a napkin or a paper towel and just blot and that actually will give you the lightest kind of color situation. And then again, you save these paper towels or napkins, use them later for other projects. Take this one that I did earlier. And what I would do is I just take like a marker because if at this point it's dry, you can stamp on these or do whatever you want. I like to be simple. So I'll just letter in really simply. And the way I do most of these tags when I like to do homemade gift tags is I don't address them right away. I just do a to and a from. And I used to have a whole shit ton of them in different colors. That way, when it comes time to actually address or like put names on them, then I will have a bunch of them and I can just pick for what color will work for what package. And then, so this is just a simple, quick way. You just do a whole bunch of these at once and you'll have a bunch of cool looking gift tags pretty easily. A way that's a little less quick but still relatively quick is to do a similar kind of color wash using distress inks. And this works real well if you happen to have a bunch of these sitting around. I have a ton of random little Tim Holtz distress inks that I get in like the little multi-packs. I never have the big ones. I just use the little guys because I can get a whole bunch of colors in once. And I'm using again, two colors from the same family. This is sponge sugar and this is fired brick. Okay. So I use these two guys and then I use one of these, the little like round, I don't know, with the, the spongy, whatever the fuck this thing is called, that have the little like Velcro applicators on them. And I use this guy because I found that the round applicator smooths things out a little bit better. If you use the, if you use the rectangle shape one, you get the harsh lines. So whatever this thing is, it still can go really quick, especially when you get the hang of it. I'll take the lighter color, get my ink going. Starting from the edge, I'll work my way in, in just a, like, circular motion just to give it like the light color and I try and cover over any like obvious harsh lines but it's okay if it doesn't look perfect because 
like this is not meant to look perfect if that was the case you'd buy the generic looking things from target and no shame on the generic looking things from target they're fast and they're cheap and that might be my stripper name but that's also a really like really helpful thing when you're running out of time but this is a fun thing to do especially if you have kids that are sitting around they can just do this while they're while they're sitting watching tv or whatnot so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the darker color, tapping it on here, again, working from the edge, but I'm not going to go all the way into the middle. I'm going to just edge it. And I kind of went a little deeper into the edge than I wanted to. So, but again, say lovey. It's, it is what it is. God, I hate that saying. So then you have just a very quick little tag. And that didn't take very long at all. And you can do this with all sorts of different color inks. I would, again, suggest that you pick colors that like are from the same like two different shades of the same color or if colors from the same color family because otherwise you're going to wind up with the mud. And I'm not sure how this would work with other stamp inks. I love the distress inks because of how like antiqued they go on. But if you don't have distress inks, give it a shot with another set. And you can try this with like your handy paper towel or napkin. Like, see, you can get a similar, whoops, a similar kind of thing. You just aren't going to get quite as much color payoff. But with a napkin or paper towel, you can do the same thing. You don't have to buy the fancy tool if you don't want to. Another way that you can do it if you have some cursive under your belt is get some downstroke thickening kind of in your life. And I love making the two and the from have the same kind of look to them when you're doing something like this because I think it adds a little like fanciness to it and we all know about fancy and again with these you can stamp on them you can doodle on them you can do whatever you want I'm going simple because I'm taking this from the perspective of wanting to get a whole bunch done really quickly okay I'm going to show you two other tags that I did and these are both the probably this one's less time intensive. This one was the most time intensive. However, they were probably the least expensive because all you would have to buy is the tags and you just use washi tape you already have, okay? And the washi tapes I'm using are from a various amount of sources, so they are different price points. This was the cheapest. This was from the Dollar Tree last year. Actually, this might've been cheaper. This is from Bye Bye Birdies and I think they actually run a little cheaper than the Dollar Tree. And then this one was from Simply Gilded, so this was a little bit more expensive. This one was the easiest one, and I just put them on there to make it look like a present. This is going to seem like no dir, but this will give you an, an example of how you can use some washi tape to dress up your card. So this is kind of being done like present style. So what I do is I will just take the tape and lay it down, trying to keep it straight. That's probably the most obnoxious part about doing this is I have no magical powers on keeping it straight. I just eyeball it probably because that's just how I live my life. What I usually do is just fold it over. If somebody wants to look at the back of your washi tape thing and think, I don't have edges, like whatever, they don't have to worry about that. But this guy I cut because with the corners, it makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass. So I take my scissors and I just run them right next to, right next to, like I notch them right up next to the edge of the, the tag. What I do is I take the credit card and I burnish it down. I just run it down just a little bit to make sure that the washi tape is nice and secure. Lay the other part of the present down the other way you wrap a present. And then again, because these are on the flat edges and I, you could cut them with your scissors or you could just do this. I'm just doing this. Adds to the whole handmade effect. Keep telling yourself that, Cindy. And then I just give it the old rub down. There's two different ways you can write on it. And I'm going to do bubble letters because I might have a little bit more space for that. Pen, though, is not loving me right now. You can add color to your bubble letters that coordinates if you want to. You don't have to do bubble letters either. Like mine are looking a little sloppy because I forgot that the Sharpie will bleed into the cardstock. You might want to pick a more gel-like pen that's not going to feather out and bleed on this material of these tags, but I am using this pen because I do what I want and if it feathers out, well, that's just the way it's going to have to be. This is why things wind up being a hot mess. If I had planned this out better, I would have put the from a little closer so I could have the dots, but whatevs. Then the other way that you can do it is turn it and so you have a couple of different little gift looking tags. And with any kind of washi you want, this could look cute. 
And this would also work really well for like birthday car birthday tags or housewarming gifts or whatever. Last washi tape craft I'm going to show you is the probably the biggest pain in the ass. This is the doing like a cool looking little frame. To do this one, I took the gold. The nice part about this gold is that it has lines on it, so it makes it relatively easy to line up. Do you want to just line it up? And I'm going to cut it off thinking like guesstimating about how much washi tape is going to be at the bottom for the, you know, give yourself, whoops, forgot this tape does not like being cut like that. Give yourself, I don't know, almost the width of the washi tape you're going to be using at the bottom. So you're not overly stacking washi when you don't need to. Then turn it over and I just cut this bit off. And I'll cut this bit off and I do the same thing. I just sock my I sock my scissors right up against the edge of it. And then take my credit card or whatever. Give it a good old burnish. It looks like I missed a little bit because I'm I'm a failure today. Maybe my scissors are just getting sticky. Once you've cut enough sticky things, this once you've just like dipped your scissors in stickiness, the stickiness eventually just stops wanting to go away. And that could also be taken very nasty if you think about it, but let's try not to think about it, shall we? Do a quick rub down, love rubbing things down, and then do the same thing on the other side. Like I said, I have no real like good tips for lining washi tape, but mostly just because I'm not very good at it, so I'm not very good at giving advice. So now that you've got those two stripes down, little burnish. Then I'm going to take the same scraps so I can reuse some of the same washi tape and just cover up the top parts. I'm just going to fold this guy over. So I found that on these skinnier sections, sometimes it'll come up if you're not really careful, especially if you're using a washi tape that has a slightly less adhesive surface. And this one does, partly because it is um, so foiled. It doesn't have the foil paper on it, which is fabulous because I hate that. But that does mean that it does not adhere as neatly to some things. So you have to really give them a good rub down. Like rub that shit down down. You don't have to tell me twice. Okay, then rub, 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 rub. And I'm grabbing one more scrap and just lining it up. Now you're basically just covering up the edges. And see, look, that almost does it perfectly. Almost. Covering up the edges to make this like interesting little frame. And then we have our last piece to go across the bottom. So I'm going to grab another scrap. And you don't have to be so meticulous with the scraps if you don't care if you have a ton of washi tape that you need to use up. And believe me, I do have a ton of washi tape that I need to use up. However, I really love my Simply Gilded washi. I hate wasting it. And so then take your other coordinated washi tape, kind of line it up with the very, very bottom so that you don't have to fold it over. Did this too low. But um Raise this puppy up just a skosh. Okay, rub. Rubbity, rubbity, rub. Let's try this again. And this <laughs> Dollar Tree washi tape is so much like paper, it just cracks me up. This is a little crooked, but fucking, I don't care. It's the spirit of giving, not the spirit of perfection. We have to keep reminding ourselves of that, right? Are you with me? And like, Cindy, stop making excuses for how crooked your shit is. I keep having to rub things down. I may wind up just trimming those. And that's mostly just because the more you layer on, the harder it is to keep things down. I'm just trimming off the bottom here. I'm going to trim this puppy off too because it's starting to piss me off. Give it a final burnish. Rub down all the parts. And you have a beautiful tag. So you can do this with other washi tapes that you have. I would suggest layer, like pick things that coordinate well together. Like I felt like these did because they kind of looked nice together. And if you can add some kind of foil or something sparkly, then all's the better. 
I would, if I was doing it like this and I had a pattern at the bottom, like if it was just like polka dots, then you could turn it either way to do your lettering. But I would suggest if you have something like these uh, gingerbread men that you letter vertically. So I'm going to do another cursive. And that is just a cute little washi tag. And this is probably the most labor intensive because you have to cut the washi in all the ways, but it also comes out really cute and it uses up your spare washi, which I always, always recommend. So here are some ideas for some Christmas, holiday, birthday, whatever gift tags. I did them with Christmassy holiday colors because that's what, you know, is going on right now. Some of them are quick, some of them are a little less quick, but you know, it's a fun way to do something different that doesn't require a lot of fancy doodling, lettering, stamping skills. These are all super beginner level tags. It shouldn't be hard to just bust a bunch of these out or have your kids bust a bunch of these out. I always recommend child labor when I can. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you next time.